Hey guys, welcome back to another YouTube video. My name is Natasha. You might know me as Planted in Platinum on Instagram and TikTok. Today we're going to be doing some plant chores and therium edition. So I have seven and theriums that we're going to be repotting together today. I would also like to extend my deepest gratitude to everybody for all your support in my first video. I had so much love and I feel over the moon excited about my YouTube channel. I am now sitting at over 1000 views. I have 226 subscribers and I'm so thrilled. Thank you guys so, so much for showing up for me. I am so beyond grateful for all of you. Alright, so the seven anthuriums that we're going to be repotting today are my Zara Michelle crossed with luxurians that I featured in my first YouTube video. This one is in moss in a tiny little seedling starter cup, so it'll be good to give it some more space to stretch its feet and watch it thrive. I'm excited to see that one put out a big leaf. Next up, we have Anthurium SP Silver Peru, which I acquired in um, December. So this was another one on my wish list that I didn't show in my video because I didn't get it in 2024, but this one is a very special one that I've added to my collection. It's in a, I believe it's either an aeroid mix or a tree fern mix. I think it's a tree fern mix. And the roots are all the way at the bottom of the pot. So you can see right there. So I want to up-pot this one as well. I wasn't sure if I wanted to repot this one or not because it has a new leaf coming, but it needs it so bad. So this is my um, Dark Crystal Crossed with Luxurians. It's so beautiful. This is one of my favorite Lux hybrids. I'm so thrilled to grow this. So it'll be really nice to get her into a bigger pot as well. She's got a lot of roots in there and coming out of the top of the pot. Next up is going to be Anthurium Velvet Moira, which actually rotted on me not too long ago. So I rerooted her into a perlite heavy moss mix and she's got quite a few roots as you can see in there. And she's pushed out two leaves and she just does not have room in this deli container anymore. So we're going to be up potting her today. Then this beautiful Anthurium Moodyanum hybrid, which is one of my favorite hybrids. The leaf shape on this plant is unreal. I'm obsessed. This is not a variegated leaf. This leaf got burned by my Barinas, so unfortunately it's not variegated, but it's still so beautiful. This one's also popping a new leaf, but this plant is literally like falling over. So this needs a repot very, very bad. It has roots all the way to the bottom of the cup, so we'll be up-potting her into something a bit bigger as well. Then we have here my Red Crystallinum Wu 5 crossed with itself, which I acquired as a little seedling, and it's just pushing against the side of the cup. So I want to get her into something bigger as well to continue her rooting process. So we'll be repotting her today. And last but not least, my Anthurium Tim Plowmanii. This guy's so cool. I'm actually really um, excited to get this one into something bigger. It's been rooting in perlite for a very, very long time. And it just pushed out this cute little leaf too. So tiny. So I think it needs a new, a new pot with some proper mix. So those are the seven anthuriums that we're going to be repotting today and we're going to be repotting them into a new substrate that i haven't used before so this substrate was inspired by alice from you don't even grow here she uses a tree fern soil substrate for a lot of her plants and has great success with it um, mine's a little bit different as i'm going to be using a tree fern and soilless aeroid mix um, I use cocoa choir instead of soil, so we'll see how that goes. Um, I wanted to show you the mix. I mixed it up before I started this video. So let's take a look. Look at that. It's actually so light and fluffy. 
So yes, I'm really excited to try this mix out and see how it does with my plants. So nice. <laughs> I've been wanting to try this mix for a while now. So it's nice that I can finally give it a shot. So I use Crystal Star Nurseries Mineral Magic Pond. I swear by this pond. This is the only pond that I like to use. It's got big chunks of pond as opposed to like the finer granules, which I prefer to use. So I use three cups of the Mineral Magic Pond Mix together with one cup of the Chunky Perlite. Give that a good mix and that's my pond mix. So I filled one of these bins half full with my um, pond mix with perlite and then the other half I filled it with tree fern fiber and then I just dumped this into a huge bowl and gave it a good stir and then I filled the whole bin up with the soilless aeroid mix to make it a 50% mix of the tree fern and pond and a 50% mix of my soilless aeroid mix. So that's what we're going to be working with today. All right, so we're going to start off with the Zara Michelle Luxurians Hybrid. I think I'm going to try to put it into one of these um, small pots here. It's still clear so I can see through it. I want to keep this tag. So I like to pull off as much of the moss off of the roots as I can very gently and I do that just by starting at the um, top of the root and pulling straight down very gently just to try to get most of it off of there so that I can put her into her new substrate. So her roots actually look so good. Look at those. So nice and healthy. All right, so first of all, we're gonna be doing a LECA layer at the bottom. I have some rinsed LECA off to the side. All right, so I just did a thin LECA layer. You can't see through, but it's about, up to here. Let me see if actually that's going to work. Hmm. I wonder if I should put this into a bigger container. I think I'll try this one. Just a little bit taller, so I think that might be a better idea. Okay, that should work. I'm just going to fill a bit of the pawn and tree fern mix in there and inoculate the root system. I always like to use great white and I always just sprinkle it right on the roots. It is water soluble, so you can mix it with water and then water your plant, but I always just sprinkle it right on the roots. And then I'll fill her up. So I got this plant on actually on Valentine's Day. I received it in the mail. So I haven't had it for very long, a couple weeks, but when I get my new plants, I always like to let them sit for a little bit in their current pots, in their current substrate, and just let them acclimate to my conditions. So I had her in one of my prop boxes in my tent with some other smaller seedlings that I have. And she did so great. And I will pull this baby leaf off of the bottom. I like to do that to create more room along the stem so that I can fill the substrate up higher and make sure that the bottom part of the stem and all of the roots are covered so that she has more area to work with to root.
Oh, I'm so excited about this plant. This is one of the Luxurians hybrids that I have been searching for. So I was so excited to see this posted for sale. All right, I think she is good in there. Put her little cute tag back in there. And that's what she's looking like in her new little pot. Ah, how cute. Number one done. That was actually pretty quick. Okay, next up we have the SP Silver Peru. Same thing, I'm gonna take her little tag out and see what we're working with here. I find this plant dries out so quickly. I actually overwatered it when I first got it. It was one leaf and it had this leaf was just coming in. And I overwatered it and unfortunately lost the first leaf, but we still have lots to work with here. And now I know she doesn't like a whole bunch of water. I was doing some research on this plant and Aeroid Project Peru was the first um, Instagram page that I'd seen this plant on a couple of years ago or maybe a year ago now. And I'd always wanted it because it was so beautiful. I love the silver foliage. And they had always said that they're very thirsty. They like a lot of water. So I wasn't too sure. I thought that it would be okay with me giving it more water, but not, apparently not. It was not happy with my decision to overwater it, which is fair. <laughs> like, I really don't think it was an acclimatization thing. I really think it was just me overwatering it, but that's how we learn, right? Trial and error, how to experiment with things. Yeah, this is an interesting mix that I got it in. Very cocoa husky or bark maybe, bark and cocoa, hard to tell. Oh wow, the roots on this are so crazy. I think I might actually go give this a rinse off in the sink just so that I can see it a bit more clear and take any rot off if there is any. So it looks like it's attached to a chonk. I'm going to carefully remove it from that chonk because some of the chonk is um, rotting. This is always scary, removing a plant from the chonk. <laughs> I did it. So here's the chonk. You can see, you can see here that it's squishy. So it's rotting in there, but it did its job of giving this plant nutrients to grow and form its own little root system. So it's time for it to go. So I'm gonna go give this a quick rinse off and I'll be right back. All right, so this is what we are working with. We do have some roots that need to be pruned off. I have my scissors here. So we're just gonna go ahead and prune those roots. So you want to prune roots off that are not um, nice and white and healthy like this. Like you see this brown root here. How it pulls, oh, this will be hard to show you, how it just pulls off and there's like a string left. That is rot. So I'm going to chop that off. And this is a secondary root coming off of the primary root. So the primary root is this big one and it starts here. I'm just gonna chop that and then go ahead and chop the rest of the other ones that are the same. Okay, so that's what we're left with. The root system looks nice and healthy. There's no more rotten roots on it. I'm gonna take a look at the um, stem and there's just some old sheaths I can peel off just to prevent any future rot. But being very careful not to pull off any growth points. 
There we go. Perfect. So we had a little bit of a dried up aerial root in there, which is totally fine. But yeah, I'm not even going to bother soaking this one in peroxide. There was only a tiny bit of rot, so it should be just fine for this whole new root system to just go directly into the soilless arid next. So the pot that I had chose for it was this one here, which I think will be perfect size ratio for you guys. Peel this sticker off. So we're just going to start with a leco layer. So there you can see I have a small leco layer at the bottom of the cup. And then I'll just put a layer of the soilless aeroid mix. And then we can inoculate the root system. Fairly just the tiniest sprinkle is all I do. If you're wondering, there's no measurements required. So, and then I'm just going to fill this pot up with the soilless aeroid mix. When I'm repotting, I like to kind of, I like to push the edges down to make sure there's no air, air gaps in the mix. And then I also like to kind of push into the middle so that the roots, in between the roots, there's no air gaps either. Just very gently. Just to make sure. And that's another good thing about using the clear pots, as you can see on the outsides of the pots, if there are any air gaps, which is so helpful. I am an advocate for planting in clear pots. I love being able to see the water level of the plant. I love being able to see the root system, how healthy it is, if I need to chop off any roots. It's just such a great product to use. All right, we got that little cute aerial root buried at the top. Everything looks good. Checking for any gaps. I don't see anything. Oh, there she is, friends, in her cute little new home. Anthurium SP Silver Peru. All right, next up, we're going to do the Dark Crystal Crossbiz Luxurians, and we're going to try to be very, very gentle to um, not damage that leaf. So for this one, I was thinking of putting it maybe in this taller slitted orchid pot. We'll see what her root system looks like once she gets out. She is right now into tree fern fiber and pawn. So we'll just press gently along the sides to loosen up the substrate. These pots are very sensitive though, so I'm going to try my best not to break the pot so I can reuse it. And just tug gently, wiggling at the base of the plant. Okay, there we go. She came out actually quite easily. So that's good. I'm just going to remove the substrate and see what we're working with for roots. And when I pot in no drainage, which this little cup is, I always 
like to rinse the root system before I repot it, just so that I can kind of flush it from any, any buildup of salts. So look at those roots. There's so many roots. I'm just going to go rinse this off in the sink and I'll be right back. Oh my goodness. There we are. She has so many healthy roots. I'm not going to have to chop anything off. Everything's so healthy. That's what I love about tree fern. It grows the healthiest roots. Love it. So now I have to figure out how to get these crazy roots into the pot since a lot of them are facing up. I don't want to take off that lower leaf like this one here. Do you see how, how there are a lot of roots around it? If I took this off, it would be easier to bury it deeper, but Number one, it's growing a new leaf. So if I take that leaf off, I could jeopardize the growth of that leaf. And number two, it's such a beautiful leaf. I don't want to lose it. So let's try. Is this pot going to work? Let's see here. Um, or should I put it into something bigger? Hmm. Decisions, decisions. I think I might just put it into something bigger since this, since this plant grows roots so crazy. So I'm going to set her down gently. Get our left layer going. And the layer of our soilless tree fern. Mix. Oh my goodness. This is going to be interesting. Oh, I also don't want her new leaf to get stuck on the inside of the pot. So let's try this. First inoculate. And then we will commence. Oh my goodness, she cannot be tamed, friends. <laughs> I'm just trying to be very, very gentle with this new leaf here. And... Make sure that the substrate is evenly dispersed. It's kind of challenging, not gonna lie, but we got this. So I'm not sure how long I've had this plant, actually. I think it's been over a year now. I grew it from a seed or a seedling, a small seedling. I can't remember now. But wow, when it popped out this huge leaf, I was just, I was in shock. <laughs> it was so, so gorgeous. The reason I had it rooting up in um, that little cup is because I repotted it once already and I actually took a bottom cut of it because this is one plant I don't want to lose. So, but you know what, like this thing is rooting like crazy. So I might take the bottom cut to one of my upcoming markets that I'm going to be selling plants in and see if anybody else would like it. I'm going to be doing a reptile expedition, a reptile expo in um, March on the weekend of March 15th. So it's a two day event and I'll be there selling plants which I'm really excited for. I did um, participate in this once already and it was a lot of fun. So I'll be doing that in March. And then in um, May, the Pretty Planty Plant Market is going to be up and running again. So we did that last year, it was the first year and it turned out so, so well. I couldn't even believe it. There were so many people, so many friendly people. And it was so nice to meet some of the people who I've been selling plants to in person. And now I feel like this leaf is going to have a hard time 
growing. I should have planted it so the leaf was outside of the pot, but it's kind of inside of the pot. We'll see how it goes. We'll see. Use big pots, they said. It will be fun, they said. <laughs> All right. So I am happy with this. I don't see any gaps. So here she is, friends. Dark Crystal Lux all potted up in her new cute little pot. Her cute little leaf. All right, so next up we're gonna do the Velvet Mora, which is a hybrid of Anthurium papillolaminum crossed with Subsignatum. So, this is a really interesting hybrid. I love anything pappy, so of course I had to get it, but the subsignatum has got such pronounced lobes that I even had to, it made me even want it more. <laughs> you see how the lobes are kind of almost flat? It's such a pretty plant. It's got like a glossy finish, the yellow midrib, and the cool sinus. You can definitely see the pappy in there as well. It's got the color, like the darkness of the pappy. So yeah, this one I didn't want to rot. I'm so glad I was able to save it. It just wasn't doing anything for the longest time. And I was like, what is wrong with this plant? So I unpotted it and sure enough, <laughs> root rot. I literally picked it up and the plant came off of the root. So I'm like, oh no. But it was savable, so that was pretty good. I was lucky. Alright, so we have got quite a nice root system on this guy. I'm just going to go rinse off the roots and I will return. All right, I'm back. The roots look amazing. So I think this is her newest leaf, which got kind of mangled from being in the side of the pot. Showing you all her leaves. She's so pretty. I can't wait till this one matures. It's going to be such a beautiful plant. Okay, so there's a little bit of moss I can just gently try and tug away at. Her stem actually looks really good, so that's, that's good. All right. I think... I think that's good. So I had this pot picked out for her here. So I wonder if that's too big. Maybe this one's a better idea. Yeah, let's do this one since she got root rot. I don't want to overwater her. Let's try it. All right, so I have my Lucka layer, and now I'm gonna add some tree fern and soilless mix. There we go. And then we're gonna inoculate her root system. Pro tip, <laughs> don't ever leave the lid open on your great white while you're repotting. Always shut it in between um, plants because if you spill it, it's like spilling gold. <laughs> It's so expensive, so don't ever do that. I actually got a bigger tub of it this time, and I just refilled the shaker. It's much more cost-effective. I did not realize that the next size up was so much cheaper, so yeah. I'm loving this mix so far. It's so nice. I totally get 
why she likes it so much. It's like so fluffy and airy. It's really nice. Now, I'm excited to see some updates on the roots as they grow. So I'll be really excited to show some updates on these guys soon here. I have all of these living in my grow tent as of now. So I think that's where they probably will stay. I actually cleared a bunch of plants out of my grow tent. It used to be just packed to the brim. So I pulled a bunch of anthuriums out to live in ambient, which most of them are doing pretty good. There's some that are struggling a bit, but that's to be expected. And plus I have a humidifier in there that I put on sometimes, like not all the time, but sometimes. So that's helpful. But it's nice to not have so many plants in my tent now, so I have way less to water on tent day. <laughs> it's actually really nice. All right, so just doing a quick check. No air pockets. Ah, there she is. All potted up in her new little orchid pot. That's exciting. Yay. Next up, I'm going to do my red crystal, um, Wu Five Cross with Cell. I have been struggling with my editing. I'm actually a noob to editing. So, like, I can do basic editing, like speeding things up for reels. But like cutting things out and um, even just putting like names on the screen, I don't know how to do that yet. So we're a work in progress. But I did go ahead and download the free trial of Isle of Final Cut Pro. So I'm just kind of working through a Skillshare course on that to see if that will help. I'm sure it will. It's a lot of new things for me, but it's a very great learning opportunity and I'm really excited to uh, see what comes out of it. So these, th so these roots are great too, if you can see there. They still need some more time to grow, but that was just in a pond and tree fern mix. So what I wanna do with this one is keep it domed in um, just a bigger, Dome. This one's popping a leaf too, and I never even saw that. You can see. Oh my. So we'll just start off with the Lecco layer. Do you think this is going to be wide enough? Uh, plant girl problems. I'm just gonna do it. I can always repot it again. Sprinkle, sprinkle the magic powder. So if you look here, we have a couple bottom lower leaves. I'm just going to remove those. One, two. Don't come at me for that one but it exposes more of the stem so that I can bury the stem and roots in a bit deeper than I could have if I didn't do that. Oh wow, this one kind of is a bit messy. <laughs> Oops, oh well, that happens, right? So there are a lot of people trying uh, Jesse Blue Dakota's method of potting his plants into huge pots to get bigger leaves, which I think is super cool. I haven't really done that yet. So I'm, a couple of these are a bit bigger than I typically would, but not all of them. But it's really interesting how that works. I think that's so cool. Okay, so. There we go. This one I think is a bit bigger than I normally would pot that up. A big bigger of a pot. And I think if you like just left a plant in a pot for a really long time where it was super root bound and it wasn't showing damage on the leaves would um, push the plant to flower, to bloom more and maybe to pop. But 
bigger foliage and a robust, healthy root system is also lovely. <laughs> Guess it depends on your intentions for the plant, your goals for the plant. But anyways, I am going to attach the top dome and I'll water these all at the end off camera. So I just use masking tape because it's super easy to open and close with masking tape. And then just seal the sides. Perfect. There's our little cutie. I can't really see her a little bit. I actually won that plant in a giveaway from Woohoo Tropicals Canada. I was so excited when I won that because I wanted to add a red crystal to my collection. And yeah, I got one. So that's really, really cool. Thank you to Woohoo Tropicals for that. I can't wait to see what she looks like as she matures. All right, guys. So our last plant is our Tim Plowmanii. So this I've had for a bit. Um, I got it in a mystery bag. I think it was from Crafteria and Greens, I want to say, but I could be wrong. I don't remember 100% on that one. But this one reminds me of the Peltigerum, which I did have before. And that one's a really challenging plant for me. It did not make it, unfortunately. So when I saw this, I was like, oh, you know what? I have to try that. It looks so similar. It's so gorgeous. Like that leaf is so so cool and i love how this leaf the ears overlap like that that's adorable so this leaf came out and hasn't really grown much so i think it really is in need of a repot so we're going to check on the health of these roots in the perlite and yeah see what they look like that's the one thing with glass vessels is you can't squeeze them which is kind of hard to get the plant out oh the wiggling method is working yay all right actually i'm going to bring this back so i can try and get most of them perlate back into the vessel for easier cleanup Oh wow, so we have a bit of a rotten stem at the bottom, if you can see there, yuck. So we're going to have to chop up that stem, but it has a big stem, so I don't feel like it feels hard at the top of the stem, so I don't think the rot has traveled all the way up. Good thing I pulled this out. Oops, broke a little root. Perlite like really sticks to the roots. <laughs> Can be hard to get off sometimes. Same with pawn. But easier than moss, that's for sure. Moss roots are terrible most of the time. I find the easiest way to take moss roots, moss off the roots is to really like soak the root ball in water the moss will lift off way easier. All right, give it a good shake. And I'm just going to go rinse that off. I'll be right back. Okay, so here we go. The roots all actually look really good. They've got nice, healthy white tips. Everything's growing. I don't see right away any roots that I need to chop off actually so that's positive to you but let's take a look at the stem here okay so I did get a kitchen knife and I'm just gonna kind of squeeze up the stem it seems to just be the tip of the stem hey that's pretty good okay so let's cut just above it let's see we are good it wasn't even that much rot. I literally just cut the tip of the trunk off. 
wow. Okay. So I'm wondering if we should try and propagate a piece of this stem since we already cut into it. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Okay. I'm just going to chop some of this stem off. I don't see any growth points, but we'll do some scraping. And yeah. Maybe we can propagate. Whoops, we sacrificed a root. Okay, so this is the stem that I have, sorry, this is the chunk that I have removed from the plant. The plant still has a bit of a chunk and all of these roots. So the chunk bottom is healthy. So this is my rooting hormone. I just use the ProMix rooting hormone and mix it with Ceylon cinnamon just to help prevent rot. And then I'm just gonna dip the end, the cut end into there, just to hopefully let it callous before we do anything with it. So I'm just gonna lay this off to the side. So I just have a good old ear wax scraper that I use, ordered it off of Amazon. And we're gonna just take a look at this see if we can find a growth point. I always end up scraping them off. <laughs> Not always, but a lot of the time, which can be very sad. Oh, I should have grabbed some water to dip it in to clean it off. That's okay. I gotta learn as I go with this. I'm not used to filming YouTube videos. You need so much stuff. <laughs> So much stuff for setup. Oh my goodness. So much black. But yeah, I have some really good uh, video ideas for upcoming videos. Um, I was thinking of doing a tour of all my Anthurium Luxurians hybrids since they are, I think, one of my favorite Anthurium hybrids and I have a huge collection of them. Well, maybe not huge as opposed to some people, but you know, I have a good, good size collection of them that I could share with you. I think that would be a really fun video to do. But it's been really fun um, being on YouTube so far. I've been enjoying myself and it's been such a learning curve learning about the editing and all the software and my husband so kindly if you saw my post bought me a macbook which almost made me cry i was so so excited um and yeah i downloaded the final cut pro um free trial it's a three-month free trial you can get for a macbook and i've been working on exploring that and seeing if that's something that I would like to purchase in the future. So far it's been kind of confusing, but I found a really good course on Skillshare that has been kind of walking me through it in um, English and in, in a language I understand. <laughs> I went on YouTube and there was, um, there were some tutorials, but the people that were speaking were speaking so, so fast and it was so hard for me to like follow along. So I thought maybe Skillshare. So I signed up for the free trial of Skillshare too and I'm just going through that now. Right now I use Splice, which I find works amazing for me right now. But it would be good to have something with more features, just more capabilities. Because editing is something that amazes me. Like I would love to be really good at editing one day. I think it's so cool. There's so much to learn too. I've come across a couple little bumps though where I think growth points could be forming from. So I'll clean this up and give it a good hydrogen peroxide soak and then I'll probably just stick it in moss or tree fern or something. I'm not sure yet. Okay, so, so that is what we are left with. I'm just going to go give it a rinse and take a closer look. 
Okay. So this is what we are left with. I don't really see any growth points on there, but like there's like a bumpy green spot right there that looks like could have one. Same with right, right up here. Yeah, so we'll just pop this into, I'm just gonna pop it into pawn actually, I think and see if it does anything. But first I'm gonna give it a hydrogen peroxide soak. Okay, so now we're back with the um, Kim Plamanii. Let her callus for a couple minutes. And I think I'll pot her into this cup here. Should be okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a leka layer down. And a layer of the tree fern and soilless arid mix. Oh my goodness. Do you see that? This whole chunk of root. Off. I'm going to do a little tug test to make sure these roots are okay. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I should scrape this trunk a little bit. As you can see, there are little green growth points along the base of the stem here. There and there. And there's something happening right here as well. So I think we'll be seeing lots of new growth on here, which is exciting. Maybe I should just pop it in here. Oh, that's way too small. Okay, you know what? We're going to go big. We're going to go big or go home. So this leaf is hard to see, but it has some yellowing along the sides and it's quite low on the um, trunk. So I'm going to remove it so I can pot this lower. Sorry, friends. And yeah, so we're stuck with, left with this leaf here and this leaf. Inoculate those roots. And fill her up. If anybody's curious what I put in my Aeroid mix, um, I use Coco Coir. I use the fine fur bark from the pet store, so it's already sterilized. I use chunky perlite. I use fine perlite. I use medium-sized moss. No, not moss. <laughs> Medium-sized pumice and um, activated charcoal powder. I kind of wanted to get the little chunks of charcoal, but I couldn't find any, so I just used the horticultural activated charcoal powder. And I mean, like watering my plants, you get a little bit of black runoff, but that's okay. I don't mind at all. Charcoal is really good for helping with any sort of clean up any bacteria that could be in the substrate. So that's good. Just kind of like massaging the soil a bit just to make sure it's not creating any air pockets. 
Okay, let's take a look. Oh, it looks great. Okay, so there's the pin plan anyi. How cute. All right, so I have collected some pawn and perlite. Let the chunk soak for a bit, about 15 minutes. Just gonna dry it off. I rinsed the peroxide off of the chunk. And she's dry. So we'll just lay her on top. I'm gonna sprinkle the tiniest bit of great white in there because there is one little root. I think she's going to pop from this side, so I left that side facing up. I'm just gonna put the tiniest amount of water in there. And a lid. I'm not gonna close it all the way. I'm just gonna leave a little bit of it open. All right, I almost forgot one. <laughs> So we have this Moodyanum hybrid, and it could possibly be crossed with Crystallinum. The grower thinks it might be Crystallinum, but it looks like it might be another bench hybrid. It does have like a red border around the leaf margin. I don't know if you can see that or if it's picking it up. But it does appear to have like a light, light red border around it. Hard to see. So possibly. Anyways, we're going to take it out of this moss, this algae. Oh my goodness. Okay. Sorry, friend. Okay, so here's the root situation on the Moody Anum hybrid, crossed with possibly crystal. The roots look amazing. I'm just gonna go give them a quick rinse off and then we'll take a look, a better look at them. So there they are. They look amazing. I'm just looking here. I like to take little bottom cuts. Sometimes the baby leaves, instead of just removing them, sometimes they have their own little root system, so I can make a separate plant out of it. You just have to be careful when you cut, but I've done it so many times already. I think I might do that. Yeah, because it does have its own little root system. Okay, I wonder if I can show you guys. It's gonna be hard to see. Hmm. Maybe not. Okay. Anyways. Okay. So I did chop it. I was able to secure this baby leaf here with this whole root system. And then we have our a plant with her own little root system. So we have two plants now. That's exciting. And I'm just going to remove this lower leaf down here so that we can pot her lower into the substrate. And I'm also going to remove these two bottom lower ones as well. So this one, oh no, I did lose a bit more of that root system because of my cut, but that's okay. We still have a root on her. She's good. So there's that. This is the one that fell off. <laughs> but yeah, so we'll just pot her up and find something for her little baby. So I'm gonna pot her into this little four inch pot.
Okay, so I've got a little pot here I'm going to use. Just going to inoculate the roots. There we are. Then this is a really long root and I don't want to break it any more than I already did. There we go. Perfect. Just going to fill it up. All right, so there she is in her new little pot, which I'm going to pop into this tall orchid pot. She is. All right, so we got everything repotted into our tree fern and soilless aeroid mix. I just wanted to give you one last look at how everything turned out. So this is the dark crystal crossed with luxurians in her five inch pot with her little leca layer. She's so cute. I'm excited for this one. Then we have our other Lux hybrid, our Zara Michelle crossed with Lux. She's also looking super cute. Then we have our Velvet Moira, who looks so cute in her new pot as well. We have our Tim Plowmanii with a cute little baby leaf. So adorable. Oh my goodness. And I think she's going to be happy in this size of pot. We have our Silver Peru. I'm so excited about this one. I'll try not to overwater it again. I felt so guilty when I did that. <laughs> But that's how we learn. You can't beat yourself up for small mistakes like that. They're learning opportunities. And she is in a new pot that I think will be perfect size for her root system to grow and thrive. And then we have our red crystallinum in its new little dome. So cute. So then we have our Moody Annum Hybrid in its new little pot. It's still kind of tippy. I might need something to support that. I might throw a little stake in there just until it grows a bit of a root system. A bit more of a root system since I kind of destroyed it. I don't usually do that. I'm usually quite successful with those little baby chops, <laughs> but that's okay. She still had some roots. She'll be fine. And this is her little baby. So there's that. 
And oh, we did one more thing. We did the Tim Plow Mani Eye Chonk. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I had so much fun repotting the anthuriums with you guys and showing you the mix that I made. I think it's going to work just fine. I will definitely provide updates as soon as I can for you guys to see how it turned out. If you guys like this video, please consider hitting the like button, leaving a comment, or subscribing to my YouTube channel. I would greatly appreciate any of that. Thank you so much again, and have a wonderful day. Bye!